three, two, one. You're like Rick. Go! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Open Bar Review. It's the Doctor of Thugonomics, Paul Wedding. With me, as always, is Leopold Knob. And we're here at Rip Rocks, and this week we'll be reviewing the latest Netflix series, A Series of Unfortunate Events. So uh, tell us all about it now. The Neil Patrick Harris Variety Hour stars Neil Patrick Harris as Count Olaf, and Patrick Warburton as Lemony Snicket, and a bunch of other unimportant people in some other unimportant roles. Three orphans, their parents die in a fire, and then Neil Patrick Harris wants to steal other money. And he's in, like, disguises, and they have different guardians, and there's this incompetent banker, and... You got... You, you know. You know. It was a massively popular yeah, it's book series. A pretty popular children's series. This series ruined my evening, my whole life, and my day. Fuck it, you. Starting at the intro, it was telling me not to watch. Uh, I didn't realize they were being literal, because you really shouldn't watch this show. It reminded me of, like... Sort of this bizarre mashup of Wes Anderson and Tim Burton, but with like mm -hmm. zero creativity. It was really the set design that yes. reminded me a lot of Wes Anderson. Yeah, definitely. And I, I thought there were a lot of symmetrical shots too, which reminded <sighs> me of the. Uh, well, there weren't enough to make me think of, of that. Okay, that was one thing I noticed. It was really specific for me with uh, uh, Life Aquatic. Because of the terrible CGI? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the creatures. Mm -hmm. In the reptile room were yeah. the same effects, yeah. And and uh, the the lighting cues and, and the shots on Lake Lacrimos. Mm -hmm. Even the baby half the time was CGI, and yeah. I I still thought the baby was the best actor among the three children. <laughs> they didn't have a lot to work with. I really liked Patrick Warburton in this show, but I, I like Patrick Warburton in everything, so I might have kind of a bias. He's he's good. Neil Patrick Harris was good too at what he was trying to do. Yeah, I just didn't like too much what he was trying to do. He was just a little too goofy for me. I thought of the series of Fortune Events as being a lot drier in comedy, and this was very much yeah. like slapstick almost. It did a good job of having like a child's perspective type thing, and this was aimed at children. Yeah, it, it, this is a children's show. The cool parents as all goodness and light, like from a child's perspective, mm -hmm. but the villains were goofy. And that's not how a child would see Count Olaf would be the fucking monster under the bed. Like, just a mass murderer. This seemed to me like a complete failure to understand how to move from book format to streaming format. You know, the series was written by Lemony Snicket, the TV series was also written by Lemony Snicket. This was? Yeah, so this was a failing. I did not know that. So this was a failing on the author's part. That kind of makes sense then. Because it seemed to me to be just so in love with moments from the book that don't translate to screen at all. Mm -hmm. This is a streaming show. They're going to sit down for eight solid hours and watch this over a weekend, mm -hmm. which is essentially how we did it. And we didn't like a second of it, but that's how we watched it. And yet you still have those recap parts. Yeah. The Reptile Room episode, the first one, there's literal 10 minutes of review of what you've just seen if you're streaming this. There were a few times that I laughed pretty hard, actually, but for the most part, not, yeah, not that good. Same here. There were just too many parts where I was like, yeah, this is a bit... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Their running jokes got old for me after a while, like the parent thinking that the children don't know the words or whatever. Like, it's just... Yeah. Well, that was running throughout the entire book series. Yeah. Fair enough. I didn't really like the music in this show. Oh, the fucking accordion. The series ends with this awful fucking musical number. Oh, God. There was a lot of auto fellatio in this, and that was kind of the climax. <laughs> we don't know how to end this, so we're going to have a musical number. We had this, and there was the Jim Carrey movie from like 10 years ago now. Uh, I thought Jim Carrey did a better job. I I don't know, I don't really care. Count Olaf to me is is Bill Nighy. Is this fucking sinister old man. I still picture him as John Malkovich. I think that would have been the perfect That choice. would be fucking great. Yeah. But I think this series is, is going to turn into something like The Three Musketeers. Where, have you ever read The Three Musketeers? No. 
it's nothing like any production of it ever. This spy romance book that doesn't have a lot of action at all. Like, the action is described as it, he stabbed the guy. Like, you can just... There's no parrying. You can just stab people at will in, in the book. But the production, and from a play perspective and from a movie perspective, it's this huge action thing. And it's like... It's like a major get for action choreographers to be attached to a production of The Three Musketeers. And it's not based in the material at all, but that's just the reputation of the story now. Do you think that this is going to become that for the kind of actor who they would put in the Count Olaf role now? Where they're just going to keep remaking it over and over again with a Neil Patrick Harris, Jim Carrey type? I don't think so. I don't see them remaking it again after this. I think this will be the definitive uh, version of that series. The definitive version of the series. I didn't mean for that to sound so positively. <laughs> the twist, not twist, of the uh, the parents. Oh, fuck. Uh, so this isn't a spoiler because it happens in the first episode. They try to explain to you that the, the parents are actually still alive. Yeah, there's this whole backstory thing. That was another big problem I had that, with it. That pissed me off, too. They just teased you too much without actually giving you anything. Like, we don't actually know anything more other than they were part of no, the society. No, we don't. This does not work as a God's Eye story. The books are entirely from the Baudelaire's perspective. And as you progress further into the series, they learn more and more about VFD and this weird backstory with Count Olaf and the steampunk spy organization. There are a ton of scenes of Count Olaf by himself. Like, things that the Baudelaire's would not know and not be aware of. There's a ton of, of just reenactments of shit that the story didn't need. It seems to be more from the perspective of Lemony Snake at this time. Like, he's just narrating to you the events that it, how they occurred. Going further in depth in a way that doesn't really work narratively anymore. When we have this whole backstory with Count Olaf and that optometrist used to be used to date, and that whole new dynamic, what does that add? Her death was so fucking stupid, by the way. Yay. Like, oh, a crowd of people, so I'm going to jump backwards into the furnace that I know is right behind me. There are all these just sudden leaps into cartoon logic. Yeah. Physics is normal, and then when something needs to happen, suddenly it's it's Bugs Bunny and the fucking anvil. <laughs> Throughout the show, they frequently cut to Will Arnett and Colby Smulders, who are credited as father and mother, and they hint that they're the Baudelaire parents and they're not dead and they're coming to get the kids and then at the end it turns out they were the parents of the uh, uh, the the those other kids that they meet in book five I forget their names it's not Scamander the Harry Potter I don't know I don't remember the plot of any of these books Duncan and Isadora Quagmire they meet Duncan and Isadora Quagmire in book five whose parents also died in a fire and Will Arnett and Colby Smulders are their parents. And they do this big fake-out thing. Where they try to make you think that they're the Baudelaire parents and that they're going to completely fuck up everything in the series. Mm -hmm. And the, the twist is that they're not going to completely fuck up the plot. Yeah, that just kind of bothered me that, okay, you're just lying to me the whole series and then nothing of consequence really came from it. Like, why couldn't there just be a set of twins whose parents also died in a fire? Like, there's, I don't know why we need to spend time with these people. We don't really spend time with them. Basically, every time they appear, they joke about this hugely cinematic thing that they just did. Yeah. That it would have been great to see. Yeah. Tell me something you liked about this show. Uh, that's going to be difficult. <laughs> Asif Manvi was pretty good. Who was he? Uh, Montgomery Montgomery, the second guardian. Oh, okay. I like Mr. Poe. I couldn't stand that guy. Why? He took so long. Through all the skits, I'm like... Every time that guy is on screen... Oh, God. The, the people from Monty Python jump up on my shoulders and they're like, GET ON WITH IT! I liked the monotone henchman also. He usually made me laugh. At last call, Nob, how many beers would you give uh, the creators of the series of Unfortunate Events? Neil Patrick Harris. Two beers for doing what they wanted to do. They could have done so much better Yeah, I'm if, if they'd had a different concept. I'm also going to give it two beers. It wasn't unwatchable, but it also wasn't very 
good and very uninspired. Uh, how many beers did you need to watch the series again? I I I would want to be completely plastered. Yeah. Every episode, like there's just no, I I just got no value out of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I only watched it because Joseph wanted me to watch it. Yeah, I 100 percent agree. Fall wedding, we went up. Rip rocks. A series of unfortunate events. Cheers. Cheers.